Hey everyone, Atherin here. I have Matt Gentry and myself. We also have special guests, James Wright, Ken Patterson. Check out what's coming up next. So now that the cat's out of the bag, it's the, what is this again, Matt? This is the EMD SD90 Mac H. And this is the phase two variant of the Mac H. And so, what makes this different from the regular SD90 is that the H designates that it has the 16 cylinder, four stroke, 265 H prime mover, which has an output of 6,000 horsepower. So these guys were the, the most powerful six axle EMD on the, on the books. They were the most powerful single engine, longest frame locomotive that EMD produced. So how much longer is the, this locomotive versus that, that SD70 Ace? Well chain? in scale, Chris, it was one inch. I don't, so that would be, be about eight, what, nine feet? Nine feet. Yeah. So I had compared the Ace to the Mac and that's what we got about, a, about an inch. So, Ken, you did some photos with these. So yeah, they're beautiful. Uh, how did how did they frame up for you? How, what was your reaction when you first saw these? When I first saw these, the radiators were dynamic. They reminded me of the new Techno Toasters, that modern looking thing. It had this modernness to it that was so exciting in the rail yard that I just parked the car in Dupo, pulled out and started shooting shots of it. It was just beautiful how bright they were in UP in the sunlight. Well. Matt, you, you said that you had a little bit of time with these down in Texas. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? I did. I managed to escape for a weekend and run down to Tyler, Texas. Uh, our friends in the Gulf Western Modular Railroad Society out of Corpus Christi, Texas, had their modular layout set up, and I got some track time with one of these uh, pre-production samples. And um, it's a flat railroad, I'll grant it that, but one of these locomotives uh, strong enough hmm. with plenty of power left over. I was pulling 70 Atherin Cole Porter hoppers with no sweat, easily, no wheel slip, took right off like the cars weren't even behind it. Now, James, you did an unboxing video mm -hmm. and you did some, you did a few things and put it through its pace. I don't want to give too much away. I want people to go over to your, um, your unboxing video. Could you tell us a little bit about what you did there? Yeah, so the uh, unboxing video is available on my YouTube page at JLWII2000 and we ran it through the tests I usually do on any review, but in this case, uh, the pull test was over six and a half ounces, which equates to over 70 cars. And so that's consistent with what Matt tested it as. And the weight was insane. I believe it was like a, a pound and a quarter. So yeah. truly a Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Mac, that, this yeah. was definitely the biggest of the Macs. And uh, yeah. you know, it, it's one of the most distinctive locomotives. And the fact that Athern, uh, we, we took in consideration the Australian market where we want to Give a, kind of bring our market a little bit closer to um, to, uh, to Australia, and just you know give a shout out to those guys. I don't think that they get enough love in in the model railroad industry, at least from Atherin or maybe a few ma North American manufacturers. And we were so close anyway. Yeah. You know, I think that's the what how, what details did you have to do to the Australian one? For the Australian units, on the first four locomotive that FNG received, number 901 through 904. All that I needed to do was the specific handrails that the Australians use, and they add the safety bar halfway down the stanchion. Right. And um, I added some different pilot details because on the ore trains that they run, and I don't know exactly what it's for, but they have electrical junction boxes on either side of the coupler pocket, and they have dual train lines. And yeah. our model features those specific details. Hey, that's, that's awesome. Uh, another thing that I noticed on the Canadian one, this is when Rory and I were shooting that, was the grating on top of the walkway. What's the story behind that, Matt? In Canada, of course, they get uh, s this white stuff falling out of the sky called <laughs> snow. And uh, um, I guess the, 
Canadians up there have found out that they, if they elevate the walkway and they have um, openings in this elevated walkway, it lets the snow pack fall through when the crew walk along the locomotive. And so this model features that detail on the walkway, molded in uh, uh, ABS plastic oh, color to go with the walkway. And um, it's raised, oh, wow, you can see yeah. it. If you look at the locomotive in profile, you can yeah. see it's raised. And even, especially on the top view, you can see the, um, I believe it's the Morton hole pattern yeah. that goes all the way down that walkway. And it's just really a, a cool looking feature. Good job, Matt. Yeah, they, these things are looking killer. And one, one other thing that, uh, that I noticed when I was looking at a couple of Ken's pictures, he was doing some down ons of, of some of the different, you know, antennas on like the Canadian Pacific one, the sure. Union Pacific had the antenna dome. And then I noticed on the on the EMD-90, there's a different uh, radiator fan configuration. What, what's the story behind that? Well, it's a demonstrator unit. Right. And what do uh, equipment manufacturers do with demonstrator units? They build them and they send them out to different uh, class one railroads, class two railroads, whoever, and say, here, run it, play with it, test it, see how you like it. Right. And if there are any design changes or improvements or enhancements or anything that they want to test out, they'll do it to this unit. And this demonstrator unit happened to have three radiator fans. I'm not sure if it was for, uh, of course it was for extra cooling capacity, but I'm not right. sure if one of the uh, railroads that tested it uh, found that they were having overheating issues or not, but EMD put a third radiator fan on this one, and that's what we have replicated on this version here. Now, Ken, when you were setting this up to do some run-bys and some photos, do you have a favorite photo when you were when you were doing this, because I noticed you, you paid the UP quite a bit of attention, but the, that Canadian Pacific one with the pine trees, man, the, that one really resonated with me. Uh, yes. The FMG just was cool. It kind of had that, you know, out the outback look to it. The EMD 90 just charging through the different other paint schemes. I mean, out of those, what do you think was your, your favorite shot out of these? I like the way the white one looked with the blue sky and the clouds and all the yard around it. It just had a nice, the, the white locomotive shows all the detail. Right. All the detail is in your face as opposed to color paint schemes that sort of the black covers up certain things. But it's just absolutely magnificent to see the FMGs in the desert scenery out there in the outback. It was just beautiful to see that shot. Yeah. I imagine those pull a lot of ore, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Is that what that is, FMG? Yep. Uh, it's a Fortescue Metals Group, and that's an ore mining operation there in the outback. And just the fact that you did go to the extent to get the handrails right for the characteristic of what Australian law, you know, what they have not. Plus your intakes, you said the fans are all different, but your intakes underneath the radiator fans are also all different as well. Mm -hmm. You really paid attention to the differentiation between these units. Right, and well, we're gonna be over with Ken Patterson. We're gonna invite ourselves into his house, and we're gonna do a special What's Neat this week. It'll be lo uploaded next week on Monday. Uh, we're gonna have George Bogatuck there from yes, Soundtracks, we and we're gonna focus George. in on this beautiful Australian locomotive and some of the, the actual features that, um, that are more refined to this mm -hmm. uh, particular road name, uh, and also show off some neat features that we haven't done before so mm -hmm. check this all out thank you guys for ch for tuning in we're going to be showing some photos along the way we're going to be uploading some video we have a whole lot of content that we've been building up over the past few months really anxious to share all this with you guys uh, we're also going to be heading over to hobby shops we're going to start a barnstorming tour so we're going to post more information on that and on on facebook i believe you're going to be in Paducah uh, um, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, I will be in Paducah, Kentucky, at Fast Freight Hobbies with our friends from Soundtracks, Mr. George Bogatuck, who will be giving Soundtracks clinics at 11 and 2, I believe. And I will be supporting George and Soundtracks with those clinics, and I will have the Union Pacific model there for display to show off the new sounds for that 265H Prime mover. Yeah, and. We're, we'll have a big expose on what's neat. We're looking forward to uh, seeing your, your unboxing video up, James. Uh, any final thoughts that you had, uh, your experience with the model? Is it heavy, James? Yeah, it's, it's very heavy. And uh, another thing that impressed me was 
speaking of soundtracks in Tsunami 2, just the features they have, the, the digital dynamic exhaust or DDE, yeah. the fact that they had the, the LEDs, whoever picked your LEDs did a great job. It's the most accurate color temperature LEDs I've seen on a model to date. It correctly resembles the incandescent bulbs that were mm -hmm. in these locomotives. And just a very smooth moving locomotive, which is uh, attributed to that Genesis drive. Yep. So uh, overall, very impressive. I was very impressed with it, and I hope that the production models come soon because I know it's going to hurt my pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Let's go run some trains. <laughs> <laughs>